Hello everybody and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to tell you about everything that's happening in and around the city of Missoula, the state, and the nation as we dive into Wake Up Missoula. So Wake Up Missoula is a The Last Best Morning Show, and we talk about everything Missoula-esque, and we, of course, we uh, I like to dip around and talk about other things that are happening, uh, social media and otherwise. So let's kick things off with the weather, because that's what's happening here in Missoula. Um, 30 degrees outside currently. Uh, this morning, it was kind of like a weird slushy, uh, frozen um, on the wi- on my windshield, so just be aware of that. It, it was kind of weird. It kind of felt like it was kind of frozen and uh, slimy on both sides of my uh, windshield, inside and outside, so be aware of that. Your high is going to be 41 today, so it's not going to be too bad, but then you have that dense fog advisor until 11 uh, this morning. Um, it's going to have a 30 to 60 percent chance of rain happening from today into going into tonight. Veterans Day is happening um, uh on Saturday, sorry about that. I I usually get thrown off if I don't see the actual day. So Veterans Day is tomorrow. Um, And then of course, Saturday night, uh, it's gonna be partly cloudy. Your highs are gonna be in the 43, your lows are gonna be to the 27. So it's not gonna be so bad, because I know that our very own Ron Scholl will be shooting a um, uh, a Veterans Day, um, uh, I guess, memorial uh, event happening usually at Rose Park. outside, so hopefully the weather will be a little kinder to him this weekend as well. Uh, Sunday is going to be partly sunny, and it's going to be mostly cloudy Sunday night with lows into the 29th, so things are warming up just a little bit, but uh, those uh, winter uh, temperatures are going to start moseying on in um, as time goes by. So let's kick things off with a little uh, bit of news that are happening in and around the city of Missoula, kicking things off in the very beginning. Over the last few days, uh, the UM task force made up of faculty, staff, and students has taken a vote on how to rank academic and administrative units at the University for Future Investment or uh, disinvest, disinvestment. Uh, UM produced reports that uh, informed the votes, but the task force has made neither the reports nor the vote breakdowns available to the public. Basically, the university is saying if people wanted these records, they would have to ask for them. Uh, Stearns, uh, Sheila Stearns, interim president of the University of Montana, has probably never gone through such an extensive evaluation of both academic and administration units. Initially, she said UM thought some information Oh, some information about the process should be proprietary, but it is figuring out a way to be transparent. The list of transparency items are listed on the Missoulian article, and you can check that out by going to the Missoulian.com. Uh, state news. Most historians believe that uh, future Helena Mayor uh, Wilmont Collins was not the first black man to be mayor of a Montana town. Uh, the, Hel- the Helena a Weekly Herald reported in May 22, 1873, uh, that a colored barber named E.T. Johnson defeated two other mayoral candidates with a total of 56 votes before Helena became an incorporated town. An 1868 Helena City directory lists Edward T. Johnson as a black barber from Washington, D.C. Uh, the 1870 census lists Johnson as a 32-year-old with a personal a state worth of $1,000. He was an authorized a distributor of Frederick Douglass's new national era paper and lost his business and home in a fire that devastated Helena in 1874. According to archives in the Helena Weekly Herald provided by uh, the Montana History Se- Center. Um, but of course, uh, um, that, that was kind of like the last of recorded uh Thing that happened, but pretty much they got voted mayor, but then, of course, the town no longer existed. Nothing's worse than getting a job and then telling that your job no longer exists. Um, anyways, Helena Mayor uh, Wilmot Collins will replace the 16-year tenured mayor, James Smith, in 2018 in Helena. His campaign was uh, aimed at a more progressive standpoint. Collins, a Liberian refugee 30 years ago, came over to the United States to start a new life. Now 54, Collins hopes to spread the importance of addressing teen and veteran homelessness, improving tourism, and ensuring access to clean water, among other things. He has also said Helena has helped him raise his two children, and he wants to return the favor. In national news, um, Republican officials in Alabama and across the country have mixed responses to a Washington Post report detailing allegations that Roy Moore, the Republican candidate in the Alabama special U.S. Senate rate, initially basically um, had sexual contact with a 14-year-old when he was 32 years old and pursued a relationship with three other teenagers while he was in his 30s. The women who described the assault of 
uh, at the age of 14 told her story told her story and it was collaborated by friends and records um, the post says the Washington Post says she describes Minnie Moore who was then an assistant direct, uh, district attorney at the courthouse in Etowah County Alabama where he offered to watch her while her mother uh, was attending a custody hearing days later he took her home and removed their clothes and she said that they touched um, the other uh, woman says uh, more. Uh, there's, there's another woman who pr uh, basically uh, more was trying to pursue them uh, from the ages of 16, 17, and 18. Many Republicans say that they're trying to downplay as if uh, they can altogether ignore this by saying like um, things like uh, basically the um, a lot of ways is that the age of consent in Alabama at that time was 16 and up. So that's basically kind of how they're playing it off. Uh, for a lot of the other uh, things as well. So most Senate Republicans took an if true stance um, as Talking Points memo put it, that is saying that women's accounts of their experiences are not enough to promote uh, calls for, for Moore's reg resignation, but he should remove himself from the race if accusations are legitimate. So that's kind of what's happening in the um, in the nation as uh, what's going on around. So let's uh, dive in and let's sh show some new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. We have three new programs airing this weekend. Um, there was the uh, City Club, um, which kind of has the uh, debate between Sheila Stearns and Mayor John Engen. But other than that, we also have uh, uh, Joe uh, Throckman. It's his lecture. I showed some of his seminar on Wednesday, but you get to see his lecture where he talks about um, um, basically war and um, some videos that he has provided from World War One, and which will be celebrating um, 99 years this Saturday, uh, tomorrow. Uh, and then also we have, let's see, a conversation with Ambassador David O'Sullivan, who is an uh, ambassador with the UK, and he's talking about the uh, Europeans. I mean, the UK's. Uh, leaving of the European Union. So without further ado, here is the new programs and when I come back, I got pre-critic. So I do want to make sure that I uh, make one thing very clear um, that I failed to mention earlier, I had in my notes. The soldiers that we showed, they were white soldiers. And we talked a lot about that because we had to deal with the fact that they were segregated. And the exhibit at the cemetery uh, addressed um, the, uh, the contributions of, of soldiers of color uh, in that battle. What we were trying to do again was show pretty much the the standard experience, which was uh, you know it was groups of white of, of white soldiers. When we went to the um, old guard, we did offer uh, the ability to be involved in the film to everyone that was in there uh, was was in their group, and we did have uh, a few who uh, were soldiers of color who did come along. One actually ended up as a French soldier that you saw in the. Uh, hospital scene, uh, and we used him um, as actually a back uh, back of the camera advisor, so that if I had a question, I could talk to him, and he could talk to me in real soldier terms about what it was I was trying to say. To acknowledge that we ultimately are a democratic structure in Europe. The European Union is predicated utterly on democracy. That is why we have a provision in our treaty that allows country to leave. You don't have a comparable provision in your constitution, and you fought a civil war over it at one point. I'm not saying you should, I'm just saying uh, that we actually accept that at the end of the day, people are in this 
uh, with their consent. They are not forced to be in the European Union. No one forced the UK to join the European Union. They applied. They wanted to get in. They came in. They had a referendum to confirm that they wanted to be there in 1975, which was massively endorsed. But now they've changed their mind. We understand. We respect it. We regret it. But I don't believe that that's going to be replicated elsewhere. In fact, in the days after the, the, the vote in the UK, support for the European Union in all 27 other member states went up, surged up actually, into higher, higher levels of public support than we'd ever seen. Um, for those of you who may not be familiar, um, land trusts provide for a limited equity ownership model, which means that uh, the cost of land, which is frankly the most significant cost in terms of building housing in Missoula, Montana today, is tempered by the fact that um, that some of the equity goes back into that trust and is shared, and so uh, so home buyers, while seeing some equity, they don't see the dramatic increase that an open market purchase would allow. Um, land trusts work. We've done them on a relatively small scale in Missoula, but they're certainly one of the tools in the toolbox that we'll be considering as we work on housing policy. Land is a big deal. And as I believe a realtor once said, they ain't more of it. Hey guys, welcome back. And now let's talk about some movies that are coming out this week, uh, starting with a, re a reboot of a uh, masterpiece uh, book, Murder on the Orient Express. You know, uh, I, I honestly, I, I like the original with Sean Connery and uh, some of those uh, folks back in those days. Um, but unfortunately, we're going to be stuck with another one with a whole bunch of people. Like you got Johnny Depp, Josh Gad, Michelle Pfeiffer. I think it's Michelle Pfeiffer. Um, uh, Madame Judy Dench, uh, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. The, the girl who plays Ray in the Star Trek, Star Wars movie, whatever. I'm going to make a lot of people angry because of that. But let's talk about this movie. It has one goal and one goal only, to get as many famous people together in a film for basically a stage play. This is a movie called Murder on the Orient Express, whose plot is as is basically on, in its title. So a uh, famous detective, um, of course, must solve a case before the passengers get off the next stop. But of course, back in those days, a lot of those uh, kind of like mystery kind of books were like really popular, and this was like one of them that really just kind of stood out because it didn't have Sherlock Holmes. Um, moving on, we got Daddy's Home 2, which basically brings together Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg yet again for a movie about fatherhood, being dads, being a good father, but not really necessarily raising kids. So it's it's more about just kind of one-upping one another. Um, I, I haven't seen the original, but I, I'm assuming it basically has two guys who are just like, hey, man, you you know, like, I'm a tough, cool dad. And he's like, well, I'm a supportive, loving dad. That's cool, right? Wrong. So that's basically kind of what the movie is, and it kind of goes through those tropes again. So, And then, of course, it adds their grandfathers, which is the parents of Will Ferrell and Mark, which is played by uh, Mel Gibson, who is the cool uh, Mark uh, Wahlberg dad, and then um, John Lithgow, which is the uh, loving, caring, um, supportive father of Will Ferrell. So, anyways, that kind of, I don't know, I, it's... If, if you want to, I guess if you want a cheap laugh and you want to be like, oh yeah, I have a dad too, and you know he's kind of crazy, whatever, that kind of thing, or he's emotionally distant, blah blah blah. I don't know. It's 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 a hard way to really uh, connect with these kind of movies, especially. Speaking of connections, uh, this movie is a love story, but it's also a superhero dark deep story about I don't know. It's like I was like reading the synopsis and it says. Thelma is a movie for, uh, so basically, it's a love story centered around a lady named Thelma, whose powers begin to manifest as she gets closer and closer to her love interest. So, love is basically giving her superpowers, which is nothing wrong with that, but of course, like any, like, of these kind of indie type films, it's going to be like, um, oh man, these powers, I, I have to hide them from my love interest, and, and the love interest is like, hey man, what's, what's been going on with you? It's like, um, it just, you know, things are just happening, and like, I'm going through some changes, it's like, oh, okay, cool, and then like, they find out that she has superpowers, like, some kind of government entity comes after her, and it's like, sorry, I have to go, bye forever, and she's like, oh, but I was just starting to fall in love with you, and then, yeah, blah, 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 this is like one of those kind of like movies where it's just kind of like, I, I, it's almost like guaranteed the formula is just like her superpowers manifest out of her control and then she ends up like disappearing, dying or something like that. So the the love story is always never ends in a happy ending because it's like really, I don't know. Superhero movies are getting more and more popular and why not talk about a deep, 
um, movie about having superpowers or supernatural forces. Anyways, that kind of concludes uh, your uh, pre-critic. I do have a flagship Friday video of the week, and it is from C.S. Porter Middle School. So this is uh, uh, the cougar of C.S. Porter, or C.S. Porter Cougar. I don't know. I, I haven't decided which uh, title it is, but whatever the title is, you'll see it in the video. Okay, so I am here to announce there is a cougar in the school. Don't panic. <laughs> Well, good things first. We won, but uh, uh, th th they brought the cougar here because we can't be like other schools. We have to bring the cougar because we're awesome. Yeah, I don't think it was such a good idea. Idea. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little nervous. Um, you wanna go first? I'm really scared. It's okay. I don't wanna die by the cougar. It's a cougar, it's chill, and it's not really, like, active, I don't think. I fought in World War II, so then you would have the honor of living in this country, didn't I? How old are you? <laughs> old enough to know those six trends. What's those kids like these days? Um, MySpace! Basically, I was standing there, and a massive beast came up to me, bigger than the Empire State Building, and he was all like, <laughs> and I took out my Glock and fired six shots at him, <laughs> killing him instantly, and then he came back to life by the power of Satan and tried to kill me, but they shot lasers from my hands and incinerated his chest, and his ghost haunts the school to this day. I have already suffered an injury, but this time I'll be prepared. Here. Popsicles here, candy here, it launches. I've got plenty of ammunition. Why, we cannot launch this place. Ammunition is supposed to function with me. Can you tell us your heroic story of how you survived the cougar attack? I kind of laid down and kind of like kicked my leg. I mean my arm. Oh, yeah. So here we go. I saw the tracks, and I saw the cougar must have been here. So I spent my time looking for it, falling the foot. These are backwards, falling the footprints. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. Those prints have been here long before the cougar was ever even here. You got me there. It was, uh, it was just me using my master technique of acting and reenacting that one old man over there. What? <laughs> Would you be willing to uh, uh, start on a reenactment of the cougar? Oh, why, yes, I would. <gasps> the end of the pause, it ends right here. Did you hear that? Yes! Quick, quick, let Seriously, we've got to get out of here. I'm ditching you. I'm pretty sure the cougar is it. What is the word? Allergic to rubber bands. So when do you plan on testing this item on the cougar?
tell you what. You know the cougar? Like back when I was in CS Porter, cougar never messed with me. And I was like, no man, you're not gonna mess with me because I'm the man. And I got free strand right here, protecting me all the way. Yeah, you see that? That's a nod of approval. No cougar's gonna mess with us, no cougar's gonna mess with anybody while I'm in town. And I came back for CS Porter to protect these kids from the cougar of CS Porter. Oh. And what were the efforts of some of the experts uh, being done to deal with this cougar? Experts. Experts. What makes you a cougar expert? Um, I watched a documentary on the TV, and I knew everything. I want you to quiz me. What uh, class of animalia does a cougar belong to? The fat ones. I want to try and find that cougar, if it is. You see, I've always wanted to talk about Anne Frank and uh, about her hit song, Look What You Just Made Me Do, which is just such a masterpiece. That sounds like it's Taylor Swift and not you. Anne Frank. No, it's Taylor Swift's the lady who was in the attic and was hiding from the Nazis. Yeah, I've seen the cougar on this school. It's a bad idea to bring him here in the first place. They should have done the game at Bell Hill so it could be at their school instead of ours. Luckily, I know that teachers don't like snow. Therefore, I'm staying right here. And yeah, yeah, he's pretty safe. I'm safe from the coolers! Yeah, that's my friend. He also says that. Um, they're stupid because they say that the cougar was, um, a very big deal and started panicking when I said don't panic. So, yeah. <laughs> Sumo wrestlers. So a cougar is a hairless, fat, sumo wrestling looking Japanese person. Yes. <laughs> oh, this kid must have had a heart attack. Hey guys, welcome back. Now, that was a, a flagship Friday video of the week. CS Porter Cougar, or Cougar of the CS Porter. I don't know. Like, you decide. You decide. Um, let's talk about some things that are happening, uh, but I do wanted to give a little, little plug to our Saturday drop-in animation just before I get into the city council. MCAT, Saturday animation. MCAT will be offering a drop-in animation for kids 9 to 13 beginning Saturday, October 14th. It's already happening, um, and it's going to be going on until um, Memorial Day weekend, so you can learn more about this by calling us at 542-6228, or you can go on to MCAT.org, which I just showed you. Um, also, if you want to learn more information about moi and my morning show and uh, find out these videos and other uh, content as well about what's happening in the city of Missoula, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. All you got to do is Google Wake Up Missoula and you can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And be sure to follow all those things because I basically post everything that I do in the morning show in separate clips so you don't have to watch the whole show. You can watch certain segments of the show at your leisure. Uh, so let's talk about some things that are happening in studio. Council. Um, one of the things they're talking about is in land use and planning. In back in May 2017, the city of Missoula initiated a process of developing greater guidance for new building development called Our Missoula. And in order to promote high quality design in the community with a focus on downtown and the commercial corridors. The project takes a two-phase approach. The first phase explores design issues with the community and identifies ex uh, Expectations. Uh, I don't know why I didn't. I had trouble saying that word. Expectations and <laughs> for new development. The second phase involves refining the strategies and specific regulations and or guidelines for review and adoption through zoning, code amendments, and other initiatives like ordinances. It basically gives residents of Missoula a way to say 
in in what gets built in the city of Missoula. I don't know. I, I just banged my hand on my desk. But mini tax and uh, sorry, my coffee's kicking in. But mini tax and financial incentives are pr- provided to those businesses that comply. But private owners don't have to fret because they don't have to give up any rights when building any buildings here. A major change includes sidewalk and building distance from the street and how tall buildings can be. Um, let's start with John Wilkins, who is concerned about uh, residents close to uh, commercial roads and areas as well. So um, they were talking about building townhouses in certain areas. There's me. So is there any plans to put a crosswalk in and the yellow flash and lights to make sure kids can get across safely to go to school? And I have one more uh, you can probably answer both of them. The alley approach, is there room enough for two cars to pass in that alley? There is? Uh, well, uh, okay, so they uh, they respond to uh, Wilkins' comments uh, by saying that um, this is what uh, – wait, 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 hold on. Let me just find out who says this. This is um, Paul Forsythe, and he is the, with the uh, the private developer who is going to be developing these townhouses in these uh, in this particular area. Mm-hmm. And the crossing will have – we're going to work with city engineering to make sure our crossing is in the appropriate spot. You know, we have a trail right through the center. We certainly don't want to encourage full kids to cross at that point if it's not the safest point of, to cross. Um, and so that I think we'll iron that out with the city engineering department. And, but there will absolutely be a, certainly a crossing at the um, – at where that call, turnaround is. There will absolutely be a crossing there. If another crossing is, is going to be warranted, it's got to be – you know, I know. I know. Engineers don't like mid-block crossings just because the unsafe kind of nature of them. So. All right. So that was uh, his response. I mean, because uh, I mean, in terms of crosswalks, most of them are at the top or bottom of the block. It's kind of hard to put a uh, crosswalk in the middle of a block, specifically because intersections are always the best way to put in crosswalks because people usually have to stop at intersections anyways. Just to help clarify some things. Um, up next, uh, John Wilkins suggests that the crosswalk should have flashing lights, but it's, of course, this is informational only. Um, Marilyn Mahler is confused about townhouses versus just having regular homes in um, this particular area. Assuming that it actually plays. Pretty good tool when used appropriately, but what does... Does that so why but why that way and then um, is it going to have implications for financing or resale value or that kind of thing? Um, all right, so uh, sorry about that. Marilyn Marler was actually uh, uh, kind of like I- engaged and in talking about uh, certain um, things that are uh, have to do with like yurting and the, 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 the partial of land that's going to be developed is going to be turned into townhouses, which is basically 60 unit houses on an acre of land rather than four. Um, already in that p- particular block area as well, so there's a lot. Of, there's some issues uh, that come arise that they're basically all going to be pretty much the same priced home, but they're going to get less area for it as well. So uh, Paul responds to uh, some of these uh, uh, financial um, implications that may occur on this. Uh, hopefully, it plays. You could build all these houses. You could you could build all these without putting a single parcel on it. Um, without having to go through any additional review process. People can build two, three, four, five, six, seven units on a, on a piece of property. They can't, the only thing that limits it from them from doing is dividing and, and selling off an individual chunk to a family. Um, and so you, you've seen some of that in the past, multiple buildings on a parcel. And so the, the city took a pretty proactive approach to it um, and based on the rules and said, hey, if, if you can do that anyways, you know, what, what should limit us from allowing you to have to be able to transfer that parcel there. What would subdivision itself remove us from? I, I'm not sure. I think your rules, in, in a lot of ways, um, mimic what subdivision requires. Your park standards are a little more uh, rigid in that we would, if we had went through the subdivision review process, likely ask for cash and lieu, because those are, you know, we could get our unit count up then and we could um, just have a, a more feasible project, so to speak. But All right, so that was Paul Forsythe uh, talking about that. Um, the last quote that I have is from Public Comment when they open it for Public Comment. Uh, Maureen Edwards, residence near this development that's taking place for these townhouses, isn't on board um, with uh, these townhouses. What I, what I see in this particular plan is that it doesn't really match the zoning in the area. 
uh, we've had zoning changes over the years, over and over again. And what I find about zoning is that as much as I think it's a useful tool, every time somebody comes and wants an exemption for it, and they get that exemption allowed, the next person that comes says, well, they get, they're getting a smaller piece. I mean, they can build more on it, so why can't we? And so eventually zoning becomes superflu superfluous. So I like to see the zoning kept intact to the R10, I think it's R10 zoning, because all of the other neighbors around have about four houses per acre. And I think that this one, um, this one with about six houses per acre, I think it's too much for the area. They call it townhouses, but this isn't affordable housing, is it? Is this called affordable housing? No, it's market rate, okay. The size of this, my son lives in, in Canyon Creek, which is affordable housing. The size of these lots are almost identical to his at Canyon Creek. And what we're finding out is that he and his wife bought uh, in Canyon Creek when they were young, they had no children yet. They live in a house and they love it and they're doing fine. Then they had two little girls. One girl now is the first grade at uh, Hellgate, the other one's gonna be in kindergarten next year. And what they're finding out, oh, and they're expecting a third one. So what we're finding out is that that house is too small for them, that area is too small. Those yards here, what you say, well, families will move in, but those yards are too small for children. The little girl, the six-year-old said, I said, why aren't you outside? And she said, well, the yard is too small for dogs and kids, so the yard is for the, kid, or the, 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 yard is for the dogs and my bedroom is for the kids. And I think it's the truth. They're now... All right, so that was uh, Maureen Edwards uh, voicing her concern about how um, some um, developers are developing basically smaller uh, parcels of land for uh, small houses and... Um, I mean, while a lot of the neighborhoods are having a little more, like, I guess it's a whole kind of like a generational thing as well. But a lot of times, if you really think about it, you have smaller homes right next to the um, the homes that were built maybe 20, 30 years ago in the area, which is like four houses in a certain parcel of land. And a lot of times, um, many of the questions that were asked during this thing is that um, were these houses, how much they're going to cost versus how much they're going to be compared to the other houses. So it's kind of uh, unfair when you start thinking about it, like if you're paying $300,000 for a townhouse, which only has uh, a sixth of an acre uh, compared to a neighbor who, who paid about the same for a fourth of an acre. So it's just it kind of like if you just do the math, it doesn't seem like it should be right. But it's it's just interesting. Let's But, but of course, I'll, I'll leave you on that. So moving on, here's something that hasn't been talked about in a while, the Fox site, because uh, the Fox site always has been talked about, but then it's kind of like, oh yeah, we should talk about the Fox site. Oh, oh, you, we should, it, it, it's, been, it's, a, it's a long process. It, it's been a long process, and this is like one of the first things that Chris Bean for the uh, city of Missoula, uh, when he started with MRA, it's been basically his job to uh, basically figure out what kind of business and what kind of development would be at uh, the Fox site since he started working for the city. Uh, the agreement set forth uh, the specific term, condition, schedules, and costs for the land transfer, Hotel Fox, construction of the hotel, conference center, and below uh, grade parking facility, purchases of the conference center and parking facility by the city from Hotel Fox, conference center lease to Hotel Fox, management of con conference center, and of lease reading parking spaces. I also see, uh, of course, there's so many um, uh, details, and this is uh, the a memorandum of, uh, of agreement, and this is just a whole bunch of things that are happening here, but let's kick things off with a quote by Chris Behan, who was with MRA. Um, had to kind of think about some things. Now, in regards to the Fox, everybody's heard the joke that Chris can't retire. He's had 30 years in, can't retire until the Fox is done. <laughs> All right, it's gone on and on and on. And I started thinking, am I being pushed? I don't want to retire. This isn't, this, this isn't my life's work. Believe it or not, I've been after this for a long time, and it was the first piece of paper that was sat on my desk when I got here. It was, okay, put together RFP number two for the Fox site. Um, 
All right, so, uh, of course, uh, Chris Behan goes into a presentation and talks about some of the history of the Fox site. Um, years and years went by, nothing happened, um, and the Fox site was just located west of Orange Street, and, of course, the most recent business I remember actually have that was actually there on the Fox site was uh, Mustard Seed before they moved into the mall. Um, yeah, it was that long. I've been here that long. Um, but there's a, there's, a <laughs> there's a lot of interesting things happening here, but, of course, recently, Missoula has taken interest in creating a conference center large enough uh, for thousands of people to go and have uh, a hotel to stay with over 500 rooms. Um, but of course, and then uh, of course they want to have uh, basically a restaurant that can seat over a thousand people, which is kind of ambitious for sure. And of course, tax incentives were in, uh, were in place to uh, and. Uh, Dursley Whitney, LLP, um, memorandum was written up, and the city of Missoula is having this company build a conference center and hotel at a steal, so um, the city of Missoula can basically acquire the conference center from the developers who build this hotel and conference center, parking garage, and, and deal with, like, it was like, okay, we're going to, the city is going to have some of the parking spots that the parking garage gets built, um, but does it, but we don't want to, like, encroach too much on the business as well, but I'll, at the same time, we're going to give you some tax incentives to kind of bridge the gap. So anyways, that's kind of what they're talking about. But here's a nice little thing about uh, how the city of Missoula actually acquired the Fox site in the first place. And ended up with a, a, a pretty nice long uh, career uh, to, to the point where single screen theaters didn't work real well. And so at that time, the Mann Corporation was under bankruptcy and they decided to give their property to the city. So they did. So we ended up with another piece of property, and then we added to that by buying two adjacent properties, one of which used actually used the Fox Theater walls, Mustard Seed, and the Holiday. And then we took it down. Now back to my work. I think at the beginning of all this, the, the city received this in 1984. Think, if you think back about that time, it's not long before uh, I started working here. So I got to know some of the people around the city council and some of the other people around town that were supporting that acquisition. It just didn't come out of the blue. Uh, somebody walked into the mayor's office and handed a deed to this property. It was worked on for a long time by a lot of people. And that particular city council at that time created MRA, created a parking commission, com com uh, created the housing authority, redid the zoning so it actually talked about affordable housing. Uh, a lot of the things we're dealing with now were problems then. And they, it, was a, it was a very, very forward-looking, very activist uh, city council there for about eight years. They took this thinking, this is the key to reverse what's happening in downtown. This is going to be the, the, the match that lights this fuse, and town, town's going to be reborn. Well, it didn't happen. Yep. So basically, that basically didn't happen for uh, uh, since uh, from then – to now, where they're uh, doing some things uh, to uh, basically move forward on that as well. So let's go. Most of the investors uh, that had actually good ideas for this space, uh, but the city voted no every single time uh, because a lot of times the city of Missoula is always looking for the right fit. It's kind of funny that uh, the uh, they wanted the, that there's going to be a hotel Fox, kind of like a nice little wink to the uh, old. Um, um, Fox Theater that was w that was popular there back in the day because it seems like the Fox Theater was the last really like successful thing that was there for quite a while before it had to close because of just like you know moving forward and uh, they just couldn't keep up with the times so that's just usually how it always works out but of course the conference center large enough for thousands of people to go and have hotel to stay with over 500 rooms tax incentives were in place for the Dursley Whitney LLP memorandum uh, was written up and the, with the city of Missoula having the uh, company build a conference center and hotel at a steal um, did I already say that Oh my God! I did totally stay, just repeat that all over again. So here's Chris Bean, and he's going to be talking about the uh, impacts uh, of. Wait, wait, wait! Hold on. Did I skip over that? Okay, so never mind. Let me skip that one quote. I, I don't have that one. So Jeff uh, Crotch with the CTA, the um, the architectures here in Missoula, talks about the design and how this project is just the beginning of many other projects that will uh, improve the downtown area from the Fox site on. Hotel and conference center is really the first of a series of projects. This project has expanded over the last five years thanks to uh, really the uh, this city-owned project being the, 
the kickoff to our developers buying and now controlling the entire Riverfront Triangle area, um, everything from um, the Taco John's, which is not part of this project, all the way to Orange Street and the bridge, everything from Broadway to the river. And so this project really is um, the first of uh, several projects that will include things like um, housing at all income levels. Um, that's a big part of, and I, I won't talk about the overall site, I've, I've presented that to you before, but just to the west of this project on the other side of the plaza is slated for a, a pretty large housing project, office buildings, uh, retail, and an additional parking garage or two. So this project is uh, just the beginning. All right, so that was uh, Jeff Crotch with CTA. Um, he goes on to talk about some of the architecture that will be happening um, in the building. So uh, he's, he he have a couple slides and a couple ideas in mind to kind of show of what the uh, new hotel and conference center will look like. Here it is. Start to try to, as architects and designers, imagine what this concept is. You'll see here is kind of a, one of the first looks we came up with, and trying to put into words the vision of this project from a materiality perspective and a massing perspective. Here's another view, another look. Um, this is uh, more recent. Uh, we're starting to hone in on the use of uh, some brick to reference historic Missoula. We have a unique opportunity here from a design perspective because we are crossing Orange Street. So we want to do two things. We want to make sure that this very much is of the downtown Missoula core. And you'll see an image later where the street level very much feels like traditional Missoula, two stories, two three to three story. Um, but one of the things we've done is pull that brick across this major thoroughfare in Orange Street to give reference to the historic downtown. All right. So kind of gives you an idea of what they kind of want to do with the uh, uh, the look of the new Fox Hotel and uh, parking garage and the kind of the kind of general area. Of course, you can see the whole presentation online by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us. Um, so I have a, one more. Of course, this construction period for this project is actually 2022. So they're just kind of getting through the brass tacks of everything, and they have to basically work on the ground and everything else. I, the foundation. That's what I was trying to say. They're working on the foundation and doing with all that stuff. So they'll do that before they move forward with their first project, which is 2022. So uh, pretty much in my lifetime, that site will be completely uh, and utterly developed. The only request that I personally request is that they avoid those disgusting, um, pukey, uh, uh, I guess the... Uh, poopy green, the uh, baby poopy green that they've been putting on buildings lately here in the city of Missoula. Just, you know, just a little, just a, my own opinion that, you know, that has nothing to do with anything, but I just don't want to see that anymore. I'm, I'm sick of it. It's kind of, it's like overplayed and stuff like that, but anything, but basically if they build anything right there, it's, it, you know, it, the nice thing about downtown Missoula is it's um, uh, cons consistently inconsistent in terms of architecture building so it'll be a welcome uh, nice little uh, building inside the city of Missoula so uh, and downtown area um, so here's Dan Simmons who is with Dursley Whitney LLP he's a lawyer for um, that is going to be representing them and this is what he had to say you know a master development agreement has been entered into on February 22nd 2017 uh, with the developer and the thought process there, as I think you can appreciate, there are a lot of bells and whistles uh, to this project. And so the thought process with the Master Development Agreement was how do we kind of substantively break this down into different areas that we can kind of approach uh, systematically. Um, and, and so we did that through the collateral documents and the master development agreement identified those collateral documents and said, you know, we shall negotiate these collateral documents and we have a deadline to get to the finish line. Uh, that's been extended once uh, the deadline is November uh, 22nd, 2017. Um, so, uh, okay, so Basically, uh, that was that he just talks about the deadline. Um, the um, the public hearing will be held sometime before that. Either it's going to be uh, next Monday or the Monday after. Um, but you can check that out on any upcoming meetings by logging on to 
the city of Missoula's website. All you go to, it, all you got to go, all you got to do is go to ci.missoula.mt.us or Google City of Missoula, and this wonderful webpage will bring you to everything that you need to know what's happening in Missoula, um, and also. You can also work for the city, and there's always looking for people to join committees and help out with the efforts of improving the downtown Missoula life, and or, or city life Missoula, basically. So anyways, um, that's kind of what what's happening with the city of Missoula. I have a art clip for you guys, and when I come back, we're going to talk about some events that are happening in Missoula, because there's a lot happening this weekend. So stay with us. Well, kids have the day off today here in the city of Missoula, and there are a bunch of little tiny events that are happening, um, which include um, some of the, uh, let's see, kicking things off for your Friday is the Missoula Parks and Recreation Schools Out Day Camp. It already started. It's happening at Currents Aquatic Center, and it's happening until about uh, 5.30 p.m., and uh, you can register online, or you can call them at 721 Park. So all you got to do is do that, uh, find out more information about that. So uh, it's happening uh, today, but also uh, another one of those uh, camps will be on December 22nd, December 26th to the 29th. So right after Christmas Day, you can pretty much just get rid of your kids to these kind of camps. But then these are all 8 to 5.30 p.m., so it's a good way for parents to be able to do this. Registration fee is $42.00 per day or $35 with a city card resident discount. So if you live in the city, you basically can apply for a city card. All you got to do is bring a piece of mail that proves that you're a city of Missoula resident and you can pretty much save, um, let me count that, $7. Um, Mrs. Mo schools out camp. Ms. Mo Gymnastics is doing another, another day out of school, so it happens until 3.30 p.m. Um, I'm, I'm assuming you can probably still take them there, so there's still plenty of time. Another uh, Missoula Sectarium is also hosting a days, uh, days off school as well, starting this morning at 9 a.m., so it's happening pretty much all day today as well, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., and it's age for ages 5 to 11. It's $50 or $45 for members. And, of course, if you want to just do like an hour or so to keep your kids busy, uh, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena and Roots Acro Sports Center will have indoor sports arena stuff from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., all sorts of wonderful things. But if you are an old soul like myself, you will enjoy some bridge and cribbage at the Senior Center starting at 12.30, and then um, basically nothing happening until about 4 p.m. with predator feeding at the Missoula Insectarium. Maybe they have a couple of yoga things, but I usually don't talk about yoga because there's too much yoga. There's just way too much yoga on Missoula events. Sunday. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Okay, so last best print fest archive show. Zootown Arts Community Center is doing a a print fest, but also one of many things that are happening at 5.30 tonight at, uh, at Zootown Arts Community Center. So it's located just next to Kettle House. You can't miss it. Um, then the, the MSEF Snowball Missoula Winery and Event Center is hosting a snowball, the 28th annual Missoula Ski Education Foundation Snowball. Um, so the whole idea is a ball, you know, like a um, – and it's also a play on words because, you know, you snowball, you'd have a snowball fight, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, join for, to support the local youth ski development and racing programs. And you can visit their website at the MSEF um, for more information. And kids under 10, uh, 10 and under getting free. 
Um, MCT for Performing Arts is Missoula Children's Theater section of MCT will be doing Willy Wonka Kids. So if you know Willy Wonka, they're doing a kids version of Willy Wonka. So enjoy this wonderful play, which uh, basically has uh, kids go into a chocolate factory, have some chocolate, and just uh, pig out. So what a great time uh, to talk about more chocolate after they've had their fill after the uh, Halloween uh, trick-or-treating days. Uh, there's a rap battle happening tonight. Uh, I usually don't talk about late-night events, but this will be a nice little palate cleanser uh, guiding into your nightly uh, uh, duties for some of you guys who like to go out and about late at night, and that's a rap battle. And you get to win $1,000 for top prize. So if you're an amazing rapper... You get a thousand dollars top prize. There's a fifty dollar entry fee, so I'm assuming they're probably going to want like twenty people to enter the rap battle, so then they can justify paying a thousand dollars to the winner. So that's what's happening, and this is an eighteen and up event. So if you're a high school student who is eighteen, because I know a lot of high school students that kind of like like doing the whole rap thing, because they go through a phase. It, it it happened to me. I know it was a dark time in my life. <laughs> But yeah, that's happening. It's seven dollar cover charge, and then of course, so it's like fifty-seven dollars. So if you can win a thousand dollars, you're basically be uh, nine hundred and forty-three dollars richer um, from that way on. So just think about that. Um, so let's move on to some um, nightly events that are happening. Um, here's the White Buffalo at the Top Out Lounge's folk music. Dead Hipster present I Love the 90s. So if you like 90s music, so it's a very just like uh, Hoopastank or Lincoln Park, that kind of thing. The Badlanders are placed for you. Uh, electronic music at the VFW. Uh, rap Battle again. Uh, cash for Junkers. Union Club 406 is going to be country music at the Sunrise Saloon. That's basically all your Friday night events. But let's just uh, skip on over into your Saturday events. I have about five minutes left in the show um, thousand new gardens uh, to bed day so um, part of the fall thing is that uh, people prep their soil for uh, gardens for so this part is a so uh, you can email them at a thousand new gardens at gmail.com or you can check with them on Facebook it's a thousand new gardens and it's been basically run since I was in college and it's been going on pretty strong for about eight seven seven eight years now and it's a really good events that promotes gardening in basically small acreage areas. So if you're interested in starting a garden, they're the people to call. Thousand New Gardens, and they'll be doing a bed day. So early, bright and early Saturday morning, they gather up and they start basically preparing your soil in your backyard for a garden. Uh, used outdoor gear sale at the University of Montana starting at 9 a.m. Um, if you're interested in doing a outdoor gear swap, it starts at 9 a.m. at the University of Montana. It's in the uh, UC atrium, and a lot of times what they do is that you can actually drop off some of your gear between 7 and 11 a.m., and then basically the event picks off, and the uh, they, they the only thing they want is they, they get a 20% cut of what of, of, of what of, of some of the outdoor gear that is sold of yours. So basically they sell it for you and they only ask for 20%. Uh, Saturday, November 11th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, equipment Sunday, uh, um, November 12th, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. is the sale of equipment as well. So that's kind of happening. It's a Saturday and Sunday. You can drop it off Saturday and then you can pick up whatever's left on Sunday, including the money that you make from selling your stuff, if you do. Uh, Big Sky High School Drama and Tennis Craft Fair. Interesting um, L, uh, connection, but the Big Sky High School presents a holiday craft fair. Past years have hosted over 50 local artists and vendors. Proceeds will directly benefit the Big Sky High School Drama and Tennis programs. Um, they should just do a tennis play and then they basically you can do the funds together. Anyways, equipment and students travel. Um, additionally, these funds support the winter and spring theater productions of the Big Sky High School. And that's happening at 9 a.m. at Big Sky High School. Um, Missoula Valley Winter Market is happening, um, basically kicking things off for your winter market at the Missoula Senior Center tomorrow at 9 a.m. And for some of you who like the farmer's market and get your farmer's market fix still going on strong, um, it, it kind of like, I don't know if you want to wean yourself off of farmer's market because I love farmer's market, but this is a winter market, which they'll be doing. Um, they kind of jump around over the years. They did at the Elks Lodge last year, and this year they're, it seems like they're going to do it at the Missoula Senior Center. Um, Fort Missoula Regional Park is, hopi is hosting a Veterans Day ceremony starting at 10.15 a.m. You can check that out. Traditionally, Post 101 has held Veterans Day at the event at the Doughboy statue located in downtown Missoula, the courthouse, of course, due to construction. They relocated this year, and they'll be beginning at the ceremony at Silver Park and finishing around 11 a.m. in time to fully, fully acknowledge Armistice Day. Armistice Day, 99 years ago, the 11th o'clock in the morning of the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month marked the 1918 mark of the end of hostilities in the western front of World War I. Um, and, of course, 
I'm, I'm pretty sure the Kaiser, the Kaiser uh, basically lived um, well until 1942, even after the fact. So he's the one who basically perpetrated World War One on the German side. So you can blame the Kaiser. Uh, but of course, he lived well into the Nazi era, into 1942, apparently. So uh, I, I learned that a pretty interesting tidbit. But if you're not uh, interested in doing some of that other stuff as well, um, um, you can create with Linda Whit Lessie is Living Art of, of Montana. Living Art of Montana is people who are 18 and older dealing with illness or loss, no experience necessary, and they use art to uh, as a form of healing. To find out more information, you can call them at 549-5329. Living Art is a place to create, share, and heal. MCAT Saturday drop-ins are kicking off and uh, continuing on uh, this Saturday, uh, tomorrow from 1 to 5 p.m. for any kids aged 9 to 13, or uh, they are rounded. We're usually pretty flexible for some kids who are 7 or 8. Um, and basically, any kids can, who can sit still for an hour or two, who can uh, do some stop animation, it's a great experience. And maybe if they, uh, if they're lucky, we can all do some um, cool little live action film. It's a great way to get experience with uh, basically making movies and creating stories. Um, express their imagination. We got plenty of Legos. Uh, Sacred sexuality intro talk. <laughs> Okay, so that's it's, it's, it's there's no segue to get from a, a kids uh, afternoon activity to a sacred sexuality. So let's talk about this. Meadow Sweet Herbs is hosting a like-minded people and learn about the various traditions and wonderful benefits of sacred sexuality, ancient techniques for basically it's the Kama Sutra kind of stuff. And um, where they talk about sexual healing and deep intimacy will be shared. I wonder if they're going to play that one song. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, Dance Up Close, University of Montana, this annual black box showcase it, um, pro uh, provides audiences with a chance to see new original works of emerging established dance artists. And this happens from uh, November 10th through 11th, 7.30 p.m. And the matinees November 11th at 2 p.m. I'm running out of time. So um, let's just kind of – there's a gallery show at the Radius Gallery. Um, and here are some of your late night events happening for your Saturday night. You got Nashville 406 is going to be at uh, Country Music at the Benny's French Town Club. Absolutely, we'll be at the Battle Letter Karaoke by Kaleidoscope. It's going to be at VFW. Joan Zen is going to be at the Union Club. Sunrise Saloon 406 is going to be there. Cross Country Benefit for Blue Mountain Clinic is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge. That's basically all the things that are happening this weekend. There is a Fort Missoula talk with Hal Stearns about Indian history at the uh, Indian at the Heritage at the Montana Heritage Hall. Hall at the Fort Missoula, so you can check that out. It's happening Sunday at 2 p.m. But once again, if you want more information about this and more, you can log on to MissoulaEvents.net. MissoulaEvents.net is your place to go for, hey, what's happening in Missoula? This is it. This is what's happening in Missoula at MissoulaEvents.net. If you want more information about my show, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can subscribe to me on YouTube, like me on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter. You can't do one thing for all of them, but you can pretty much do the same thing for all of them. You can also go to mcat.org for every, everything you need about MCAT. If you're interested in having us film or doing a program, you can go to our, to our website, and all you got to do is go to the link, How Do I Request Event Recording, Submit a Program, and that's pretty much it. So... Thanks for joining me, and I hope you guys have a really good weekend. Um, I'm pretty much cut off from um, being on the air. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. Mm -hmm.